Three-dimensional traffic jams. We'll ask if plans for flying cars are about to get off the ground. And we'll find out how your genetic code could help you unlock a healthier lifestyle. I'm Dana Lewis, and this is Insight. Welcome to Insight. There are more than one billion cars on the world's roads, so it's no wonder that in cities like New York and London and Istanbul, motorists spend a lot of time going nowhere fast. Governments are working on public transport solutions to end the gridlock, and campaigners encourage us to give up our cars. But what if you could just rise above it all? As long as there have been traffic jams, gridlock, Fuming motorists stacked up and stalled on the road to nowhere. Almost anyone behind the wheel has dared to dream. If only I could fly my way out of here. Mr. Taylor of Longview, Washington, takes a poor view of crowded highways, speed traps, traffic lights, and all the rest of it. So he puts wings on his car and rises above these earthly restrictions. Rolled out in 1949, this was the first flying car. We didn't get much uplift in terms of commercial sales, but buckle up, flying cars may be about to take off. There are a couple of dozen concept flying cars now at various stages of development. This one, in partnership with Airbus, and unveiled at the Geneva Car Show, works with a drone, traffic rescue from above. But there are others like Aeromobile, which actually has flying prototypes, stylish, the concept models look like a supercar with fold-out wings, ready for production, they say, this year. Two main uh, problems that can be solved uh, with Airmobile. One is the last mile uh, problem. You can have a vehicle which uh, uh, you use uh, from A to B, from point to point, or from door to door easily about, uh, with the transformation of it. Of it. And also it uh, solves the problem of the bad weather sometimes. When you have another airplane, you can uh, stay stranded at some airport, and uh, with this uh, vehicle, you can always uh, come back. In effect, an airplane, you can drive home and park in your garage. Cost? About $1.5 million each, making the price of flying cars sky high. Ten plus years before they even conceivably reach the situation where they can be accessed by the general public. but. Um, the, 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 the viability of those vehicles is definitely proven. You can make flying cars, but it's making them cost effective. If they're a plaything for rich people, then they're available now. But if they're to be used more by the general public, then that's going to take a much longer period of time. A Dutch company is already selling the PAL V gyrocopter car. The beauty of a flying car, actually, is that you don't need to take off from your backyard. You drive it from your garage, you take off at a place where nobody is bothered, you land at a place where nobody is bothered, and you drive to your destination, you don't leave anything behind. To fly is, is, is a big feeling of freedom. It's a gyroplane, it's uh, very stable, very safe, very comfortable, uh, very agile. They come in all sizes. This one looks like an ultralight rubber raft, and he's not exactly dressed to go to the office, is he? But named the Kitty Hawk, the company says it's early, just like the real Kitty Hawk was breaking new ground. This one too, hopefully not literally. Well, right now we're taxiing to the runway with the rotor stationary. Flying cars are complicated because everyone needs a full pilot's license to fly them, and so far an airport to land them. There's a lot of existing regulations, and more will be necessary as more cars take flight. Imagine the hit and recently remastered Fifth Element film. Like highways, skies can get crowded too. There are issues, legal issues. At the moment, cars uh, uh, are, are, are available uh, uh, in two dimensions. They move around in two dimensions on the ground. Having flying cars, if you call them flying cars, they're going to be, need to move around in three dimensions. So how do you control that? If conceivably hundreds or thousands or millions of these vehicles, how do you control that so that they are safe and they can operate in a safe manner? 
flying cars may truly get off the ground in a big way with the automation of drones. Computers would be better at controlling crowded skies, and automated aircraft that could be used as taxis won't require trained pilots. In the meantime, PAL V says it will be the first to mass market a flying car. Of course, we have bigger companies who watch us, and they may be interested once we have proven the concept to take it to the next level. So who knows who will be the first in the end to really make it to the mass market. If the road develop the technologies for bigger ones to then make it a worldwide business. Big names like Toyota are involved in developing flying cars. A convergence of lightweight and affordable materials and technology has brought the future forward and faster. It's just as we all imagined and eagerly dreamed of as we sat fuming behind the wheel of our earthbound automobile. I'm joined by Mike Butcher, who is the editor-at-large at TechCrunch, an online publisher of technology, industry, news, some fantastic-looking flying cars there. Where the heck is the trunk space? Uh, good question. <laughs> well, this is the big crucial issue. I'm glad you mentioned it because uh, weight is the most crucial thing in any kind of flying car or, or any kind of aeroplane at all. Um, and uh, if you're having to drive a car that needs wheels and tires along a road and then has to take off, then that's extremely inefficient. And this is why it's been so difficult to develop flying cars. But do you want one? Well, of course, everybody would like a, a flying car. Uh, but the question is, what do you do with it and what applications uh, it uh, is most relevant for? How many of these companies do you think, and there are a lot of them, are out there raising money, coming up with digital concepts? I mean, how many of them are really serious companies that have a chance of getting off the ground, do you think? Well, I think that um, if you see that the development of drones, they've um, gone from really quite complicated and in, uh, industrial applications to hobbyist activities. You can walk down the the main street these days and just buy an electric drone and off you go. And very quickly. And very quickly. And really what's happened is that people have scaled that concept up, the quadrocopter, and made it bigger and bigger and bigger and then put a put a something that can carry humans inside inside a, effectively a big quadrocopter. And and that that's been the sort of the first version of the you know the flying car that, that seems more practical actually. I, I mean, I confess my bias because I'm a private pilot and I love flying and I'm looking at these things. And one of the things they say on all the Internet sites as we are researching the story is 25, 40 hours, you'll get your license like that. It's, you know, easy peasy. But the fact is, I mean, licenses are very complicated. And then more than that, flying after you get your license through controlled airspace is very challenging. Well, yes, but I think that uh, the concept of the flying car, while in, in one sense is uh, really something for rich people to, you know, a plaything you saw there, something that looks like a supercar that you would drive out of a garage, and then this other thing, which is actually more, much more like the democratization of of uh, air travel or, or even making the helicopter more accessible in a way, uh, which is uh, something that you wouldn't really fly at all. It's about having computer controlled navigation. It's about having uh, very, very strict uh, uh, boundaries on how these aircraft would move around a city, for instance. Um, and for instance, in Dubai, uh, the Dubai Future Accelerator is right, and I've working seen with this is a This is something that Uber. swoops down. It's basically a kind of a, a large taxi which would take a number a number of people explain that mm. a bit well it's much more like a quadrocopter um, they've got some various partners involved uber is one of them potentially um, and that's really about taking off off uh, of the roofs of some of these skyscrapers moving quickly over the city and that would be controlled direct line of sight or, or by computer and, air and navigation systems you wouldn't be flying that at all yourself I mean they're really cool but so are these big million dollar, million and a half dollar, you know, fly yourself cars. But mm. I mean, it's very elitist, right? I mean, no, that's got to yeah. be decades away from coming to the public if, in fact, they come at all or they're just eclipsed by these drones. Well, um, as we saw with the, the development of Tesla, it had to develop a supercar first to get all of the technology right. And then gradually it's now, it's gone more and more mass market. Eventually, Tesla will be producing a much more mass market affordable car uh, uh, as all of these technology developments uh, sort of trickle down, as it were. Um, but yeah, there's, the, there's that, and the, there's the sort of the supercar version of the flying car, and then, as, as I say, there's the, the taxi version, which will probably come a lot faster.
20, 30 years ago, we were probably saying flying cars are 20, 30 years away, and here we are 20, 30 years later, and we're still saying it's a long way out. Do you think it's as far out as some people would say, or do you, th you think it's coming quicker now? I think it's coming much more quickly because there are some very interesting technologies coming out. Just a bit get, get a bit geeky to right now. There's a little get geeky, tech, it's good, tech right. thing called distributed electric propulsion, which, as you saw in the clips, there is the Lilium uh, uh, flying taxi, which looks like a little got a wing, two wings on it. And NASA is actually using that technology. It requires tiny, tiny amounts of tiny, small little um, electric engines instead of big ones and that makes it much more efficient more easy to control more easy to control you've actually have aerofoil surfaces which look like an actual wing as opposed to a helicopter style thing and um, that that technology has a lot of um, potential so we're just scratching the surface right now and I think uh, in the next within the next two or three years you'll start to see some quite serious attempts at making this a viable commercial proposition. I think it's really cool to watch it all develop, but, but I mean the one thing though, it almost seems like the existing air corridors and airspace have to be changed. I mean people don't realize when they're sitting in those big jets, you know, 10 miles out, you're calling a control zone, you're asking for clearance into the control zone, you're, you're steered to a, a, a particular point, then you begin your descent based on other aircraft. How would you control these things over the city if it really gets commercial steam? Mm. Uh, you're right. It's an extremely complex question, and um, and you know, let's face it, most journeys are with it inside five miles. Do so you really need a flying car for that? Um, but certainly, I think over uh, cities, more, for instance, um, which is a big question. Anything over a city, right? Because a lot of a lot of air traffic is banned over certain cities anyway. True, true. It would depend on the safety levels. These things would have to prove themselves. Uh, for, uh, aspects of safety, short haul flights. Perhaps there might even be applications to replace some level of short haul stuff. Who knows? The jury's out, and it'll take. It'll have to become cheaper, safer, and and better, as you as you as you say. What was the name of that techy geeky thing again? De ele uh, distributed electric propulsion. Learn something new every day. <laughs> Mike Butcher, thanks so much. This is Insight coming up. Why our new fitness regime could benefit from a DNA test. Thank <laughs> you.